talking about inflation, what it actually is, how it affects all of us, but more importantly, where the opportunities come. Uh, You've not got to let your mo emotions rule your head yeah. when it comes to looking after your money and your finances. And, and I think I, the UK is highly emotional right now. I think it still is. Why? Why do we have high inflation? Um, Kevin, from a, from a market's point of view. Um, so work, I've been in London all of this week, for instance, and everywhere actually, I think, feels like it's booming. Uh, Hello everybody and welcome to the True Potential Do More With Your Money podcast. It is episode 123 and today's title is Invest Now to Beat the UK Inflation Rise. What we're going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about inflation, what it actually is, how it affects all of us, but more importantly, where the opportunities come uh, in a high inflationary environment. And to help talk about those subjects today, I'm delighted to be joined by Jamie Sexton, by Steve Hutton, and by Kevin Kidney. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks. Hiya. So I think before we get into talking about high inflation and why inflation is high, I'm going to throw a curveball to the three of you. Who would like to tell our audience what inflation actually is? You're all looking at me again, <laughs> being slightly older, slightly older than everybody else. Um, You've probably seen more inflation rises, I, Steve, than... Uh, over the time I've worked... Jeff... Uh, <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Sexton. Over my lifetime, yeah, yeah I have, yeah. actually, Jamie. I've seen a lot of inflation. Um, for me, Dan, it's the increase year on year in the costs or the price of products and services. Yeah. Um, and we all notice it in you know, our daily lives. Um, we're going to talk about it. It's really pertinent at the minute. Um, you can hark back to Margaret Thatcher's years when she came into power. It was her avowed intent to kill the scourge of inflation after the 1970s. So uh, the younger generation probably have never lived through inflation. So I think it's apt that we talk about it today. Yeah. So I think probably even to put it on a simpler point of view for me, maybe if a loaf of bread was a pound last year, if inflation's up, what, 9%, it would be a pound nine. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Easy maths yeah, for me. That's right. Maths, I used a pound so, yeah. and a hundred uh, from, from there. So... Why why do we have high inflation? Um, Kevin, from a, from a market's point of view. Um, so, you know, economic activity has largely returned to normal. The, the, we're post-COVID in the Western world. What hasn't returned to normal is the supply of key goods. So, why are used car prices so high? It's because um, there's, there's not enough supply of new cars, and that's because microchips from China have the supply of that has been disrupted um, by COVID there. Um, we don't talk about it a lot, but um, over a year ago now, OPEC, the oil cartel which controls global oil pr prices, decided to cut the supply of oil by about 10 million barrels per day. So the supply of oil has greatly reduced, despite the fact that the demand for oil hasn't quite recovered to post-COVID, yeah. but we've got still got that supply-demand imbalance. And obviously the disruption in, um, the disruption in China from COVID and now the Russia-Ukraine crisis is disrupting the supply of food staples, grains and everything that goes into the stuff we take for granted, like mm. cooking oils and flour. Yeah. So we just have this vicious circle of um, supply constraints feeding inflation in everything we do. Yeah, and I think it is, I think, Kevin, that's a great point because <clears throat> most of us use a car yep. or some form of oil-based transport to get around uh, from, from there. Uh, most of us eat food hopefully maybe steve i know you drink power shakes and have a, <laughs> a nutritious lifestyle but you know uh, from 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 there and obviously maize flour oil cooking oils is, is, is all part of that and i wonder at times if maybe the inflation is high you know part of what our brief said today is this a hangover from the pandemic and i think certainly some of that might be kevin as you mentioned say with the even the used car side of things we, we talked about this in the podcast numerous times over the last two and a half years where I think it was probably you as an yeah. example, Jamie, where you just could not get a car. Uh, yeah. You had the money, um, you know, and you, 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 couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't buy it. It was, it was. It was interesting because, yes, I couldn't get a car, and I, I looked significant places to try, to try and get. I wanted a very specific type of car, but um, what was quite interesting, I bought it, and then six months later, they rang us back up and asked to buy it back off us. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was going to get a £1,000 more. Yeah. Um, so it just unheard of i remember speaking to phil elvin when i bought the car and he says congratulations you've, you've just drove out the forecourt you've lost three thousand pounds um how wrong was he well um <laughs> good, it, to good, good to put food film <clears throat> on but it's 
it's odd, isn't it? It really it's 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 odd sort of time six to see things like that because very from my lifetime I've never seen yeah sort of that increase I, in inflation. I just think some of these factors are just so artificial mm-hmm. and so short term. Mm-hmm. And I, I know some of the maybe we'll get on the prognosis for inflation as well, but I don't think some of these items can last. I think there'll certainly be some resolution with Ukraine um, and, and, yeah. and Russia. Um, it seems to be, although I don't want to underestimate what's going on, if you're still getting shelled and shot at at the moment, I, I don't want to sound blasé, but it seems to be fizzling out to a, to a degree. Um, OPEC, as, as, as Kevin could probably, you could probably talk all day, they, they, they love gaming the market yep. and, and things from there. China, are they in, are they out of, of, of lockdown? Um, so all of these things, and, and what I also, when I look at inflation and I'm studying what's spiking it, these are just certain certain things in a basket of goods so, so to speak. yeah and i think so the central banks are telling us right now either inflation falls or we'll make it fall yeah so now the the former is less painful than the latter because rising interest rates mm. coupled with rising food prices etc is a squeeze but um inflation isn't going to be here forever and yeah. we're not going to see the sort of inflation that we saw in the 70s where it was largely out of control inflation was up and down double digits year on year so i think um, central banks have really sort of upped the dial on their communication the last four weeks to say our tolerance for this is largely at an end. Yeah. Um, we are now perhaps going to have to try and lean against the economy a little bit to try and cool these inflation pressures. Yeah, yeah for, for me, and I agree, hopefully we're not going back to the 70s and I would agree with that, you've kind of hit on the, the, the point there, Dan, it's the unpredictability uh, of what's happening in the world. Yeah. Um, it is predictable that central banks and governments will try and force inflation down, and but even they have a, an overarching strategy to drive inflation down. With, you know, their basic tool is interest rate yeah. movements. Mm-hmm. Even that was unpredictable because it was a higher increase than was predicted. So I hear people say, you know, it's the unpredictability is predictable, but it's unpredictable. God, you get tied in knots. <laughs> However, yeah. um, it does tie into the fact that you will never time the markets, and you'll never time, as certainly as a novice and, and, and an unsophisticated investor, you'll never time when one of these unpredictable, unpredictable events is going to happen. The war in UK could end tomorrow. I mean, let's hope it does. It doesn't look like it would, but it could. Um, you know, they could have a, a larger than expected interest rate rise next time round, or they could not. So I think it just key into the fact, and it's where our whole ethos is, that we will take that over for the clients. We will look after their investments. We have skilled uh, investment professionals dealing with it, looking at these events and saying, you know, the probability of what will happen. Um, it's not the time to be out on your own uh, in the markets as an unsophisticated investor. Um, and it's equally, and we'll come on to this, I know, not the time to be sitting in the bank with lots of money yeah. um, whilst inflation kills it. I think it's it, it's also and kind of a, a plug for true potential here. I think it's, it's you need to be with a firm who are agile. In their, in their thinking and, and a firm who are actually diverse across where the money's invested because with that diversification becomes opportunities and then the agility I think for hopefully most people who are listening know this but uh, for those who don't um, the true potential portfolios are run on a discretionary basis which means Kevin and the rest of the investment management team they can make decisions on an almost daily basis if they need to 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 find find these opportunities and they don't need to get a client's permission which would be a non-discretionary way of running things. This discussion about time in the market again, Steve, that we've spoke about this many times, that you can't, it's you, it's very difficult, you know, to, I'd argue say you can't time a market. And, you know, we look at, you know, if you, what people tend to do is that the market started 100%, I was reading a book about this, but the market started 100%, they go, well, we'll look for the lowest point. What happens is it goes up and they'll end up at 180% rather than a 200%. Actually, they've missed that opportunity. Yeah. And the, the key way to do this is either if, you, if you're a little bit worried about, you know, which is what well, I'm personally doing, if you're a little bit worried about sort of investing at this point in time, you think, oh, the things are going down. Just think of a couple of things. You could drip your money in. So you could put your money in over a period. So you're buying different prices over that point, which is the, the benefit of pound cost averaging, which is exactly what I'm personally doing at this minute in time. Um, or you could just think of the opportunity with, you know, Stock prices are are pretty low at the minute. So you're, you're buying you're buying cheaper units. So the well, we, we talked about some of this last week, Jamie, and then actually mm-hmm. we had some really good comments mm-hmm. on 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 our YouTube channel last yeah. week from from some of our listeners. And what I said last week is basically cheap buying units similar to buying a house, yeah. which is if you think your house is worth a hundred thousand pounds, but you'd buy it today at eighty thousand pound, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, at that twenty percent 
you know, di- mm-hmm. discount because you'd have conviction that that eighty thousand pound will get back to hundred thousand yeah. pound plus. I think that's that that that's one side of things. We also had a client who who, who wrote in and said, "Well, you've talked about maybe ha- have the markets hit a bottom now, mm-hmm. but how can you ever know that?" Mm-hmm. And I don't know, Kevin. That's a real hard question, but I'll I'll give it to you. Right? It's mm-hmm. when do we know it's a bottom? Well, well I suppose the, the luxury with to being discretionary fund managers is you know it's about. Um, it's about persistence. It's not about petulance. Yeah. So this this year has been difficult with markets. So, but it's about being, you know, discipline, focusing on the fundamentals, and um, you know, focus, not fiddling with the asset allocation. So, it, to, we had our wrap up meeting this month, uh, this week, um, after we've spoken with all the TPP investment partners, and we're turning a little bit more constructive on bonds. You know, the central banks are telling us they want to cool the economy a bit. So that means focusing on potentially more be- or better returns from bonds. Um, certainly no big swing in our allocation to equities. They have cheapened up. You know, central banks are still pro-growth. They just need to mm. cool it a little mm. bit. So it's really about discipline. Mm. And, you know, it's about focusing on the long term. Um, it's uh, it's a, it's about being diverse, yeah. you know, not being just focused on the UK. You really don't want to be invested just in the UK right now. Mm. Um, one of the, you know one of the great skills at um, True Potential is that focus on the global investing, diversity of regions and diversity of managers. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a great point. And to answer your question as well, Dan, the irony is you'll only know when the bottom of the market is when you passed it and you're on the way. When up you again. bag up, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you'll never time it. And and the great mm-hmm. point there, I think, from Kevin, that um, you know different asset classes perform differently uh, in inflationary environments. So we, we talk about equities yeah. and. When you look at the news, it's all about equities. I, w- I would count this, everybody, don't get sucked in by that. Yeah. You know, other asset classes will do well in an environment of inflation. So, uh, and our skilled investment managers will asset allocate towards them as, as they see fit. But, you know, it, all the news is doom and gloom and it's really painful. It's, it's interesting. I've even stopped, I've stopped watching no, the news we, as much. We, 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 we talked about some of this last week, Steve, where, you know, the, the media are just in... They're having a great time at the moment, and I think that they're making some of this become quite self-fulfilling as as well. We talked about government last week, and I'm going to talk about government again now, and and the central banks, um, because of their lack of direction, their lack of leadership. The media are allowed to keep playing here, whereas if you had some strong messaging coming through, some strong strategy, some strong maybe rebuttals coming coming through, it would nip a lot of this panic in 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 in, in the bud, you know, and. Let's talk about central banks because Kevin mentioned it a bit. Steve, you you talked about it a bit as well. Is some of, you know, and on the concept of self fulfilment, is this high inflation arena that we're in now as a result of central banks being too soft in terms of dripping in too much soft money into the markets over the years? Um, not so much in the UK. I think what's you know what's difficult about the UK is tax rises, mm. on, and the, so we did have you know mm. loose monetary policy, low interest rates. But interest, interest rates in the UK were low from about 2009, so yeah. not a lot changed there. Um, I think the US is different. They did exceptional fiscal stimulus. They did actual helicopter drops of money into people's bank accounts so at mm-hmm. the same time as they told people, we're not going to raise interest rates until 2024. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then this time last year, they went, oh dear, we're actually going to be raising interest rates next year. And then you've had this market panic because mm-hmm. you've had volatility. So I think um, I'd be a bit kinder on the Bank of England and the, they were the first to hike as well, and they were first to indicate that they were going to raise interest rates um, going back about 10 months now. The US, um, have, I think the US central bank, they, they dropped the ball and are now paying the price for that. Yeah. Um, even yesterday, um, the, pre- the chairman of the um, Federal Reserve was in front of their parliament, Congress, and it was a bit of a you know admission of um, past sins, really. Their, their language is, is, is all over the place. And so I think that the US is, is paying the price for that. I think I think the issue is that they've had a change of government, they have a change of you know, uh, bankers. We had good stewardship under Carney, I think, generally. Um, and I think Andrew Bailey's going to be tested now. Mm-hmm. I think it's a tested time for him. 
in some kind of fairness to them, it is the perfect storm because we were going to have to unriv- un- unravel quantitative easing from the mm-hmm. banking crisis of 2008. We've had a pandemic. We've now got a war. You know, the oil price is showing, as you've said, signs of you know going up exponentially. It's a tough one for him, but he'll be tested now. So yeah. let's see his metal. Let's see what he yeah. does and stick to it. And, um, and, and, and Kevin mentioned before, you know, you've got the... the especially the UK Bank of England, you know, either let the market sort themselves out or we will intervene. And the way they intervene is by putting interest rates up, Yeah. Um, which I think the concept of that being is you then having to pay more for your mortgage, which then means you've got less spare cash, which then means you're buying less, um, which then should bring yeah. inflation down as the supply and demand equalises from there. But that's a, that's a very blunt tool, which in theory works and in the past has worked but you know there's, there's, there's a counter argument now which is that's that's yesterday's tool um would you agree gentlemen that interest rates is the so the most blunt or reliable instrument to do so or, is, or it's, it's an exceptionally yeah. blunt tool yeah and i think that's why the central banks are now in the press more on the tv screens mm. more because they're trying to use this new tool of forward guidance and communi- communication mm-hmm. to get the message across they seem to really be speaking more to employers now than employees, yeah. basically trying to get employers to cap pay awards to try and just cool the underlying inflation pressures. So I think, um, you know, the blunt tool of interest rates worked very well in the 80s to mm. really cool inflation and, and, and constrain demand, but central banks are really trying to find new tools now yeah. in the toolbox. It, it does key into your previous question. Um, the, the flow of, of news is much quicker now. It's instant, it's on your mm. handheld devices, it's always in your face. And that enhances the effect of emotion on investment and, and opinions. And putting up interest rates, because it's fueled by the press, your mortgage is going to cost mm. you more and your, your shop is going to cost you more and whatever, it keys into people's emotions. And it's the wrong thing to be doing. Yeah. You know, we've said before many times, and I'm sorry if it's boring people, but you've not got to let your mo- emotions rule your head yeah. when it comes to looking after your money and your finances. And, and I think I, the UK is highly emotional right now. I think it still is. And I, that's a sweeping statement. But, you know, I, I, I'm a keen user of social media, not because I think it's great, but because I like to kind of put my finger on the pulse mm-hmm. of, of different demographics, you know, everything from, say, Facebook, where I do have my some of my real friends across to the more kind of Warfare areas of it's Twitter and, and, and not like, Facebook with you, don't well, we? Well, you, well, right. you have another friend request. <laughs> no, I'll, 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 I'll wait for one. I've only got two friends on Facebook. Who is that? Well, it's, it's both my wife's accounts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure she's my friend. Well, we'll today. be your friend from today, if you like. Um, from from there, but the amount of polarization you see in terms of arguments, the amount of sparks which can fly mm. over over anything, I think is, is 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 it feels higher at the moment. I know there's not a it's not like we've got, like I say, a VIX index that you have an in investment yeah. that you can see the fear. I wonder yeah. if there's some sort of emotional index where you can read. And I think the emotions, what, what drives those emotions? We, we've been locked in, we've been locked out, we've been, you know, in terms of the pandemic over the last couple mm. of years, which was frightening for a lot of people to begin with because it was uncertain. Um, and then I, I think as we've came out of that, there's been some people who have been full of excitement, time to get living in the world, but there's been a lot of people who have been very cautious and nervous still about it. So I don't think that helps. I think then we've had all of the, the, the palaver, the scandal, or whatever you want to call it in terms of government and how they've behaved mm-hmm. throughout. And I don't just mean the leading government, I mean government mm-hmm. in general as, as, as well. Um, and then you've got a war, and then you've got higher prices, then you've got people worried about mortgages and, and what have you. And I think... What it seems to be doing is is fear seems to be driving more fear seems to be driving more fear at the moment and it's it's I'm not wanting to be kind of blase about and say just toughen up everybody because I think it's that wouldn't treat people as individuals but all they're kind of you know as you Kevin saying just kind of stay in your seats so to speak and be, be conviction but is there is there a kind of frame, a mindset we should be giving clients who are listening today? What, what, what should we urge people to think of? Well, we're here to help. And you're a client of ours because you've entrusted us to look after your, one of your most important you know, facets of your life is your finances. And you see, 
come and visit us. The amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to make sure that we're you know proper and honest and true custodians of your money shouldn't be you know, walked past. Um, but then you're in safe hands. We're looking after it. We have a lot of professionals looking after your investments. So don't let your emotions override that and come and do something silly. I, th I think this for me when I when I kind of speak to clients, which I do on a regular basis. There's two types of clients. You've got your clients who are, are saving for you know for just kind of look at retirement clients. They're saving for a reason. They're saving to get to that that end retirement goal. And then you've got a client that's that's taking income from their product to, to live for the rest of their life. And I think it's both the same message to me. I know we, we keep saying this in terms of just stick in, but this does feel like it has went a little bit longer. When I think. Actually, you know, the war's been going on for, for six months in, in Ukraine. We don't know how long that, that's going to go on for. And we don't know how long this inflation's going to be. But what I would say is if, if you're looking over a 10 to 20 year period, it is going to get better. It will get better at some point. Yep. You know, we don't know when that is. Actually, if I did know when that is, I'd put all my money in the day before. Yeah. Well, the, the way to frame it, if, if you're a younger investor, and I, we, we can talk about an older investor yeah. in a moment who are maybe approaching retirement yeah. or in retirement, because I think they're... A, Two different groups, yeah. because I, I think you're absolutely right, Jamie. If you're your age, how old are you? I'm 35. 35, so you'll be, you'll be working for another 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing the other week when Chris Leyland said, he's, I, I'm going to retire when I'm 60. You're like, no, you're not. <laughs> well, I thought, <laughs> no, I, I thought yeah. it was only like three years away. And when he told us he was only yeah. 45, I, he probably see me fall off his seat. Yeah, um, um, but no, it, cut it's, that out? it's um, <laughs> you'd be working, so you've got 30 years, yeah. say, to... to, to deal with a six month or 12 month yeah. period like this at the moment because just like we don't know where the bottom of a market is we don't know when some of this unpredictability mm -hmm. is going to stop as as well i think markets love predictability i i think although it, it can constrain opportunities a yeah. bit it can make mm -hmm. things steadier but i think as people if we go back to the emotional mm -hmm. the fear side of things every time a new unpredictable event comes it it can it can upset people so what I'd, what I'd say is for, for somebody like you, who's got 30, 20, whatever years, you just need to take these 6, 12 months and just get on with yeah. it, I, I think, because ultimately in history has always shown there's always a drop and then the I, growth always surpasses it. The, the way I think about it, so I've been investing in my pension since I started work, so 2007. And since that period, it kind of you, you look at this in terms of what businesses have came on and you look at so like your Facebook, your Netflix, There'll be different types of businesses like that in the future as well. But do we really think that those, you know, some of the tech stocks now are 20, 30% down from the mm. start of the year. Do we really think they're bad businesses? Actually, they're excellent businesses. And the chances are there'll be more innovations that happen over the next 10 years. Well, you know, we'll be flying the moon probably. There was but, some of that, but you know, you, yeah. you even had a, a bit of a pandemic based effect. So if you look at say Netflix, yeah. they, they were, priced a lot higher yeah. because people were locked in the house they had nothing yeah. to do so everyone mm -hmm. subscribed to Netflix yeah. it's pretty obvious in, yeah. in some ways what would happen and things like Peloton which yeah, is just an exactly. exercise bike that's got a laptop sell yeah. to yeah. I mean that went up 90% <laughs> exactly. and yeah. it fell back 90% yeah. so just just yeah, yeah, that, get someone shouting at you yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> cycle that, faster that yeah. Covid froth mm -hmm. has, has largely gone in this sort of higher uh, higher growth yeah. names I think my point is with his, is there's some really good va undervalued businesses at the minute, which you look, you know, and they will come good again. And, and you'll see that with, you know, we've got obviously different sort of stocks within the within the um, equities, within the um, portfolios, but you will see these come good again. I think this, you know, the world's a much better place than it was 20 years ago. It kind of, it doesn't feel like it is at the minute because you've got obviously what's going on in Ukraine, you've got inflation, but actually it's a much better place. But as the, as the froth comes off, as Kevin says, yeah. and what you actually get is properly priced organizations yeah. then, who will hopefully deliver steady returns, steady growth, yes. and become a stable basket of so, investments. So, um, you know, we in, in the wrap up session with with Mark Henderson, um, CEO of Investments, we we were mentioning that, um, you know, the, the price earnings multiple for U.S. Mm. equities is now back to the long term average. So it's you know it's got that normal. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're thinking about that. We're also we get questions from clients when we hold webinars, and we you know we don't answer them on the webinar. We'll go back with a written mm. response. And one of the questions that comes back was benefit of hindsight mm. would you have done this mm. one of them was would you have just gone a lot more into real estate so we took that back as a we modeled it so we thought rather than doing an equities bonds and alternatives allocation what about if we did real estate inflation linked mm. bonds and crypto with benefit of hindsight captured the inflation surge perfectly you'd have lost more money yeah, yeah and that's the, the worst drawdown you'd have had is if you were in inflation linked bonds so we've seen the mm. greatest spike in inflation for 40 years and the biggest, mm. the asset class with the biggest loss 
is inflation linked bonds. Mm, yeah. So you would have, you would have um, theoretically been right, but you would have had the biggest drawdown, and that's why we just have we have so little inflation linked bonds and, in the portfolio. Why, why is that? I know that could, this could be a whole webinar in its own right, but it's because it, it kind of doesn't make sense as you say. Yeah. Inflation linked bond inflation goes up to nine ten percent. You think that should that should be working? So why? So I mean, with every inflation print that comes in. You get a little. You get that inflation number added to the value of your bond. Yes. So that and that, that that's the inflation protect, part, protected part. The part, part they don't tell you is that the price is generally more um, correlated with the swings in interest rates. Mm. It's got far more sensitivity to what nominal bonds are doing mm. than it does what actual inflation mm. is doing. Inflation is what happened yesterday, mm. but interest rates are always trying to price what's going to happen in the next year or two years. Mm. So it's got far more sensitivity to duration. So these bonds are swinging about yeah. with, mm. with, with because of what's happening in the global bond markets, yeah. and the and um, inflation linked bonds have just had a terrible eighteen months. Yeah. It's been mm. really bad. And it's typically those type of instruments work at the more cautious side of things, and mm. that really is a foundation. You know, yeah, they're yeah. Majesty's government issued. Yeah. you know they are mm. um, safe, guaranteed, but they are still um, exposed to market movements. They are not where you. It, it, it seems bizarre to say that in these inflationary times, but inflation like bonds have not been the place to go. No, mm. no, and it, it's again, we, we've, we've talked about this in the past, but every, every investment you make is a risk. It doesn't matter if it has a title saying mm. defensive or aggressive. Um, with risk, becomes the potential to obviously lose money, but the hope and the reason why you invest money is the count of risk should be you should make more money than you could potentially mm. lose over, yep. over the yeah. long term. So. I think that the long term message mm. I would say is almost ignore what's mm. going on right now and just treat that as a normal 10, 20, just, mm. just rewind back 30 years, for mm. instance, and just look at how equities, look at how bonds, look at how everything has performed mm. and all of them are up. And, that, you know, despite all the different shocks which we've yeah. seen in, in, we'll be in history, a few shocks, haven't and we? we're living, oh, we're, we're living shocks right now, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's history yeah. uh, from there. Let's flip it across and let's say you're closer to retirement now you may be you know in your 60s or you may even be in drawdown right now so and i'm aware that this this is an emotional issue as well if you're mm. counting down the days to retirement let's say you're 64 and you've mm. you know you've 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 you and you and your wife have said we're going to be retiring at the end of this year and and you know all of a sudden maybe your legs have been swept away a little bit with that or maybe you're in drawdown right now and you've seen your pot shrink which then means are you going to run out of money faster now within retirement after all this careful planning this careful 20 30 years which which is in there do we have any hints do we have any kind of information we can give clients which they can settle them down with that I suppose I should answer that one, shouldn't I? Thank well, I've seen you looking nervous. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I was wasn't going, going to pick on uh, you, Steve. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the basic premise that, you know, when you're sort of my age, as opposed to Jamie's, you don't have as long to correct um, any errors in the market or what fluctuations. However, um, let's not forget how, you know, the markets seem to run ahead of themselves a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. We did get a lot of froth. So I think it's a case of looking at, you know, don't sort of take your highest ever valuation and think you've lost money. Take the amount you invested and where you wanted to be with your goal and see, are you still on track? So if you have had a significant drawdown, which you shouldn't have done if you're with us, you should have, we will about perform the markets. Um, but, you know, you might just have to trim your spending a little bit yeah. so you get back on track. Yeah. Um, that's going to be the case across the economy at the minute. When we, you know, if, when economies and, and countries go through these kind of uh, periods, you sometimes do have to trim your, your spending. Um, but that won't be forever. Mm. Markets will come yeah. back. The beauty of it is you've, and I know we say this all the time and it seems blase, stay in your seats. Um, if you're staying in your seat and you've got your correct risk rating and risk you know, um, parameters that you've set, which I'm sure you will have, you've got a chance to recover. Yeah. If you cut and run and you go into cash, you have no chance to recover. Absolutely. So yeah. a loss is a loss only when you crystallise Only when you crystallise And that's yeah. a really key point. Correct, Stephen. And, and we talked about some of this last week, but it's really worth repeating again which is exactly what you said there steve but i think the the other types of almost cuts which you see is when people unnecessarily take the full 25 percent yeah. tax-free cash out um, because all of a sudden you've just lost 25 percent of future accumulation yep. potential there Absolutely. and the other one is where people become wedded to a number once they're in drawdown mm. which is you know i earn two thousand pounds a month in my job 
now I've retired, I want to keep taking £2,000 a month out in drawdown. Now, I'll spin it to you because yeah. you speak to clients here. Um, what we often find, Jamie, is people don't need to take the full 25% mm. out. Uh, I think it's a misconception. Yeah. But people also aren't aware that you can take that 25% out in different intervals. Yeah. And the other thing is when, then when we speak to clients who are in retirement, in drawdown, they've got a bank full of cash yeah. because they've taken too much drawdown. Yeah. I think there's, there's two things. I think we always recommend you have an emergency fund. And, and so what what would that be? Uh, it's on average three to six months of your expenditure. So if you if you look at that from a point of view, actually do look at your bank and what am I actually spending on average per month? Times that by six if you want to be safe uh, from that perspective. But actually three months is, is, is fine because you kind of have access to your money quite quickly if need be. That would be the first thing. And then when you look at that, look how much cash you've got in your bank, because you probably find that you potentially can fulfill your your income need from your cash in your bank for a period of time. And that's how I would always look at it from a, a first point of view. Look at your cash savings; they're making no sort of in, um, they're making no sort of interest for you at the minute, really. So so look at that from a, a that that perspective. It isn't a good time to draw money out your pension at the minute. It's categorically not um, in terms of uh, when you you're on a, a sort of your value of your stocks is, is less. It's, it's because risk. every time you draw down, you're selling units yep. out of your exactly. portfolio. Yeah, yeah, you're selling units out of your portfolios at a, at, a, at a sort of cheaper cost. So it's, it's not, I know some people have to because that's part of their income, but yeah. it's not. So if you can, when you're looking at what you are spending, uh, classically, what I would say is go through 12 months of drawdown, uh, 12, I can't say drawdown, 12 months of taking money out of your pension and look at it at the end of the end of the year and go, well, actually, how much cash have I got left in my bank? How much is that created? And then when you talk to your advisor or talk to us for your next year, go, actually, I, I can reduce that because I've got this much cash mm -hmm. left in the bank. Don't just think, oh, well, I've, I took, I get £1,000 a month now. I've been spending £900 a month for that period of time. So I'll just, I'll just do 1000 so I've got that buffer because yeah. your cash just uh, does up. Well, it, it can become quite addictive, yeah. you know, I, I, or comfortable. You know, I, as myself as well, it's... We all have online access to the banks. Yeah. It's quite nice to be able to log in and say, oh, I've got this much in my current account. Today, I think it is a comfort blanket, isn't it? It's like uh, your salary, isn't it? You, you get used to it. But yeah. the great thing is here is it's, you're, not, you're not getting paid less. You just keep more in a different pot. Yeah. And, and, and this is what we get with clients saying, mm -hmm. right, well, should I just take everything out and sit it in cash because yeah. at least I'm not losing money. Now, theoretically, that £10,000 in your bank account is not going down yeah. each, each day, which you maybe withdrew from there. Mm -hmm. But when we then look at inflation, it really is that the buying power, I'll go back mm -hmm. to my loaf of bread example before, um, you know, your, your buying power is diminished with, with, with that. And, and, and the inflation measure we get from, from the Office of National Statistics, it's just a, it's a, it's a generic measure. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's inflation close to 10%, but fuel prices are up 33%. Yes. Yes. You know, food, food prices are closing in at 10%. So it's, it, it's a sort of, just give you a broad measure, but there will be people who are facing far more acute Inflationary pressures in their in their yeah. spending mm -hmm. and in their um, working lives, um, and they, they need to factor that in yeah. uh, in their outlook. Yeah. Whilst it's in your pension, it's outside of your estate. Mm. It's enjoying tax free growth. So when markets yeah. recover, it's tax free. In your current account, the simple maths is as Dan mm -hmm. and, and uh, Kevin said, it's going backwards. It's yeah. going backwards at ten percent at the minute. Yeah. And if you've got a large cash balance, you'll pay tax on it as yeah. well. It seems like a no-brainer, and it's again, it's emotional. We've got to get beyond that comfort blanket. It's easy and quite quick. If you needed some extra mm -hmm. cash, you can get it out your pension. So don't hoard it in a an inefficient bank yeah. account. Mm -hmm. Leave it in a tax-free environment outside of your estate, and and if you need it, you, you draw and, down. And this is the point, Steve. If you come in six months' time and you and you feel that actually need a little, a tiny little bit more because of these pressures, then the opposite end of there that is available, and we and we can set that up for, for people. Mm -hmm. But it's it's. It's just really, it's worth spending that little bit extra time with your advisor when you do go through that, just to really understand getting the exact amounts out and the right tax structure. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's a real oddity with, with, with all of this, and kind of please agree or, or disagree, gents. Um, when we hear about cost of living crisis and we hear about spending down and, and things like that, I've been fortunate the last few weeks, I've been here, there and everywhere, either with holidays, with work, I've been in London all of this week for instance, and everywhere actually I think feels like it's booming. Um, and that's not to say some people aren't feeling the pinch, but I wonder if it's just some as in a minority feeling the pinch, which has been blown up by the media. Mm -hmm. So I've been in a reasonable hotel. I wouldn't say a snazzy hotel in London, but a reasonable enough one. It was £550 a night. 
oh, for instance. Um, full of Americans as well. The Americans are back, by the way, in London. Yeah. So <laughs> if anyone's had a nice time over the last couple of years, they're like, oh, look at that, they're back. <laughs> uh, so uh, fr from there, but you couldn't, couldn't, get a, couldn't get into restaurants, couldn't get into bars. Mm. Um, stores were all incredibly busy. And that's not, and I know London's its own ecosystem in its own right. And bear in mind, I've been there the same week as a real strike as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there was less footfall in terms of people going to work, I felt. On, I was there Monday night, Tuesday, came back yesterday. Um, so Tuesday was quiet because of the rail strike um, in terms of workers, mm -hmm. like people coming into the office. But in terms of tourists, it was incredibly high. Then you jump across to see even Newcastle. Um, Newcastle, I find, is just busy yeah. all the time. Uh, Kevin, do you live in Edinburgh? I do, yeah. Yeah, and is that similar? Um, so feedback from people visiting is Edinburgh's heaving. Yeah. Now, yeah. Mm -hmm. we've got the festival happening in the next couple yeah. of weeks, and we haven't had a festival for three years, so there's going to be that effect. But I think the you said, Dan, that the hotel's chock-a-block. Yeah. I think that pent-up demand mm -hmm. for that holiday that's been delayed for a mm -hmm. few years yeah. or that life experience... Um, is all now being focused, I think, in this period in the Northern okay. Hemisphere with the summer, etc. Yeah. Now, I, I'm investment cap on, this is what's worrying central banks, yes. which is the goods inflation globally mm -hmm. is actually now feeding into the mm -hmm. services inflation. So if the £550 hotel and the restaurant that's put prices up mm -hmm. 10 or 15% is becoming the norm, that's what gets central banks worried, yeah. which is how do they lean into that without um, raising um, unemployment, mm -hmm. you know, without putting economically active people out of work yeah. but it is it's definitely the conundrum that the, the investment team here are facing is all the data we're seeing about um, consumer spending is actually relatively healthy you know yeah. it's trying to find a nuanced view against some of the hysteria about imminent economic collapse which is not mm -hmm. going to happen it's about where's where's the balance, where's the middle ground, and that's the challenge. There's, there's the more team. there's more cash in people's bank accounts. I think we've, oh, we've yeah. had two we've had yeah. two years of, of realistically, you know, go back six months. We've had two years of realistically of people spend a lot less, and I think this is it. We've, we've, there's more cash in people's bank accounts than it ever has been. And, and yeah. you know, a lot of that's people, a fact. A lot of people couldn't go on holiday, so perhaps did the house up or you yeah. Know, yeah. a new extension or a, a, put a pub in the garden. But yeah. the, 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 the point of me <laughs> having done that. No, it's the last thing I need in my life is a pub in the garden. <laughs> although, although, I do. I, I have a, a universal price index across the world, which is wherever I go on holiday, it's how much is a pint of lager. Cost. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the Dan price index. So, pint of lager in London was seven pound ten. Oh wow! That's, that's yeah. um, it's, it's almost six in Edinburgh. It's yeah. it's funny when they say about weddings is that the. the, uh, the the men always look at the the price of beer, and the women look at the dress. Well, it's, so, it's I, I don't know, if it's just me, but like wherever I go on holiday, I'll, people will always say, "How much was the pint?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'll you'll be up for these two euro bars. And well, things. I was in, I was in Tenerife <laughs> over Christmas, and that was one euro. For oh, great! Oh, yeah, the beer yeah, and The reassuring thing is that uh, you know petrol's still cheaper than beer. <laughs> 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 yeah. right. The stuff, stuff I drink's really cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitting oh. in the pump like that's a garage. Yeah. Um, you get it in meters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's it's a funny one because I I think it was Kevin had also said at the start. Um, you're getting central banks as well urging private businesses not to give people pay rises um, because that can drive yeah, further inflation uh, from there. Now with my chief executive hat on, that's a really uh, it's a statement I don't like. I don't like intervention uh, uh, anyway. But we look after 400 members of staff here who all do, actually, apart from some people, uh, <laughs> do, do a fab job. They're committed, they work hard, um, and I, I, I love the job that they do. And you want to reward people with pay raises, with correct money. And, you've got, and, the, and on the same hand, I guess, you've got a job market which is very competitive at the moment as well. So what do we normally do to, you know, we've just had a, a, a latest savings gap research come out and it's kind of under 30s, like work perks more, right? Like, like pizza Fridays and free gym membership and stuff. But once you become over the 30s, people are like, actually I want better wages and I want a better pension and, 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 mm. and what have you. But the, I always think the best instrument to use at work is to pay people what they're worth uh, with good pay rises when they're due one and they can then choose to buy a pizza themselves or the gym membership themselves as well so that's a lever we've always used at true potential and all of a sudden you've got central banks saying don't do that um 
I don't know. It does that. It doesn't feel. Yeah. I understand the the science behind the mathematics, but it doesn't seem quite right. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't land well when, particularly when Andrew Bailey first raised uh, this, yeah. the spectre of this back in March. I think he was uh, he was overtly clumsy with his language, Ooh. particularly yeah. for a guy who earns half a million pounds. Yeah, um, and it does seem that they're, you know, they're asking the employers of more services focused industries such as restaurants, and yeah. um, hotels to perhaps be less generous and that just seems you know it seems against the social contract mm. that the people who earn the least should be should punished for some reason yeah. yeah so it's it's mm. um, punished the worst so it's not yeah. it doesn't appear in any way equitable no and, and what is a market right. you know a tight market for for worker demand mm. yeah, yeah. Great. it doesn't it i agree with you all it doesn't seem to have slowed down at all yet and he's got to be really careful about overcorrection here you know it's yeah. uh, when learning to drive you steering to some people is quite a difficult Mm. It's still for you, I think. <laughs> it's, in there, but it's quite difficult to learn the steering part okay. of it. I'm getting picked uh, he's got to be very careful that he doesn't correct it. And there was a survey on on one of the news channels this week saying the average cost to a household has gone up by three hundred pounds per annum now. The food bill, yeah. Yeah, and you think, crikey, we're having all this hysteria about inflation, but I don't mean to be blasé again about three hundred pounds. But most households over the course of a year can probably accommodate a 300 pounds increase yeah. so it's it's tough i agree but it's not quite as doom and gloom as they're saying well an, av- an average meal just going to like a normal italians if you go with your your better half it's probably 50 quid anyway yeah. so over the course of the year it's six less meals out yeah for instance and now yeah. i know again it, it's not seen broad with the people who are on the kind of the poverty line mm. side of things but but i think again I often wonder how much of that is either media driven or political driven as as, mm-hmm. as as well because I think there's a lot of that goes on to kind of over egg and, yeah. and create a narrative as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Bradford, even Bradford doesn't seem to have slowed down. And I have to say and it's the city of culture in twenty twenty five. I should have mentioned that when yeah. I was talking yeah. about London yeah. and Edinburgh, we should have mentioned the city yeah. of culture. Correct, yes. as, so, uh, as, as well. Yeah, you should all come and visit Bradford. No. <laughs> 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 can, can we all stop at your house, Steve? You can, Jamie, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. And have a look at his garden. It's, yes, and his it's garden. And it's yeah. £500 a night. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, cheap, cheap. Yeah, yeah, cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you get breakfast. Yeah, yeah. great. In the garden. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Look, that feels like the natural, <laughs> <laughs> the natural place to end is in yeah. Steve's garden um, <laughs> today. So I think, look, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the message is uh, very similar to the one we've, we've, we've been given for a while now. Have... Have faith in why you dedicated money in the first place, which was to have a better retirement. It was to be able to pay your mortgage off. It was to be able to realise different life events from there. And the best way history has proven uh, is to invest your money wisely, to invest it with people like Kevin and the the investment management team, because ultimately money will grow when it's invested in the correct fashion. Um, I know that doesn't maybe make things easier when you're feeling the pain right now, but pain will pass as it always does in the markets. So thank you again, everybody, for listening today. Uh, please do feedback in the comments below. Uh, please do send your questions in. I think we're doing another Q&A in about two weeks' time as well. So look forward to posing more of your questions and look forward to speaking to you all very soon. Thanks, Jamie, Steve and Kevin. And cheers, everybody. Thank you. If you're interested in taking your investing to the next level, or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, then download our free guides to ICEs and pensions. These are available in the video description below.